Petrified Forest National Park is in our opinion one of the most underrated national parks. In this video, we hope to showcase some of the things to see and do here. But first, here are some things to know before you go. The park is open from 8 to 5 with the exception of Thanksgiving and Christmas. You can drive through the entire park in about 45 minutes, however, we recommend spending at least a half day to a full day here. There is a fee to enter the park, but if you have an annual park pass or the America the Beautiful pass, it is free. There are no RV, car, front country camping, or lodges in the park. There is back country camping available, but you will need a permit. It is illegal to take petrified wood from inside the park. If you would like your very own piece of petrified wood, you can stop by the gift shop or there are other stores outside the park that sell it. The wood that is sold is sourced from outside of the park. And if you're wondering if your four-legged friend can join you, well they can, as long as you clean up after them and they are on a leash that is no longer than six feet long. One thing that is really interesting about this park is just how different the northern part of the park is from the southern part. But both sections have a ton to offer. Everything from ancient Indian ruins and petroglyphs, to expansive beautiful landscapes, and of course the chance to get up close and personal to the largest collection of petrified wood in the world. We are going to be starting our tour today from the northern entrance of the park. We haven't actually had a chance to stop in the Painted Desert Visitor Center just yet, but one thing that we do know is that if you haven't filled up your gas tank, this is the last chance to buy gas before you head into the park. Depending on when you visit, you might experience some harsh weather conditions and you definitely don't want to run out of gas. After leaving the Visitor Center, we're going to head to our first stop which is the Tawa Point Overlook. At this stop, you will find a one mile long hiking trail. This will give you the first opportunity to take a look at the colorful badlands that Petrified Forest National Park is known for. If you're short on time, you can always skip this hike like we did, but it is definitely worth taking a quick second to stop and admire the scenery. As beautiful as this hike may be, I think that there are several other areas of the park that are way prettier. However, if you do decide to do this trail, you will end up hiking all the way over to stop number two on our list. This stop is just a short ways down the road and it is the Painted Desert Inn National Historic Landmark. When you first see this well-kept building, you'll find it hard to believe that it is over a hundred years old. But this building would have to admit that it's had a little bit of work done. When it was first built, this building was made out of petrified wood and other native stones but it was later renovated and converted into a museum. At the time of our visit, it was temporarily closed, but hopefully it'll be back open soon. After leaving stop number two, you will be passing by a series of viewpoints. The views from the top of them are all quite similar, but they do have different signs explaining the geology of the area. It's pretty amazing to look out and see all of the land that this park protects. Even if you do decide to stop at every viewpoint, it's probably not gonna take up a ton of time. You can be in and out of all the stops relatively quickly and on your way to the next stop on our list. Even though there's not a lot left over from this next stop, it's still going to be pretty cool for history buffs and it's the original Route 66. This highway was established in 1926 and traveled from Chicago all the way to Los Angeles. Its nickname was the Main Street of America. Unfortunately, all that's left of this stretch of the highway today is this 32 Studebaker, a series of power poles that show where the road used to be, and if you look really, really hard, you might see small stretches of asphalt. One fun addition to this stop is that if you are a geocacher, there is one hidden here. Don't worry, we're not going to show where it was hidden and give it away, but it wasn't too hard to find. After leaving Route 66, you're going to be crossing over Highway 40 and heading towards the south side of the park. If you thought that Route 66 had a lot of history to it, we're about to go way further back in time. The next two stops on our list are pretty much back to back and they are the Puerco Pueblo and the Newspaper Rock. This stop is really fascinating because it gives you a chance to take a tiny glimpse into the lives of the ancestral Puebloans that existed back in the 14th century. Inside this building, you'll find tons of exhibits and information. You will also see examples of the way that people lived and the tools that they used in day to day life. It's estimated that at one time, the Puerco Pueblo was home to over 200 people. It's too bad that the structures have fallen, but the park did a great job of preserving them enough so you get an idea of how big they were. The short and paved trail that it's only 3 tenths of a mile long will also take you to a lot of really cool petroglyphs. You could end up spending a decent amount of time trying to find all of the petroglyphs here. 
Some, like the ones here, stand out because of the contrast between the dark and light colors, but others are harder to spot. One other thing that we found pretty incredible was that the ancestral Puebloans had found a way to mark the start of the summer solstice. At a certain time of year, the sunlight shines through a crack in the rock and reaches down and touches a petroglyph. And that's how they kept track of the seasons. It's pretty impressive that they figured that out way back then. If you haven't had your fill of petroglyphs at this point, you can always head just down the road to the newspaper rock. This large flat rock appropriately got its name because it is full of stories. It's estimated that there are over 650 petroglyphs on this rock that date back over 2,000 years. The rock is a little bit far from the viewpoint, but the free binoculars will help you see everything. At this point, we are going to take a break from the historical parts of the park and head towards some beautiful nature. The next stop on our list I would consider a must-see, and it's the Teepees and Blue Forest Trail. If you're not much of a hiker, you can be happy to know that to see the teepees, you don't even have to get out of the car. These two large Chinle formations mark the beginning of our favorite parts of the park. If you're looking for an off-the-beaten-path type of adventure, look no further than the Blue Forest Trail. This three-mile trail is located just down the street from the teepees and will take you to some absolutely breathtaking landscapes. This is one of the most realistic hiking experiences that we've found in the park so far. There's no paved trails or amenities, it's just you and nature. There are some short and steep climbs here, so you need to bring shoes with lots of traction and definitely bring way more water than you think you would need. We love how the terrain constantly changes on this hike. One minute you're surrounded by white mountains and the next you're on a peak overlooking a valley full of petrified wood. And it's also worth mentioning that this was our first time encountering petrified wood on our visit. From that last overlook, you are one more steep climb from one of our favorite views in the entire park. This 360 degree view looks like something straight off of a postcard. If you wanna make this trail an A to B hike, you can connect it to the Blue Mesa Trail, which is next on our list. The Blue Mesa Trail is yet another hike that we would put on our must-do list. One good thing is that a lot of these must-do hikes are short, so you can bang out several of them in a day. The Blue Mesa Trail comes in at only one mile long, and its only challenge is the somewhat long and steep hill in the middle. But if you're willing to deal with that hill, you're in for a beautiful hike. We were lucky enough on our second visit to do this hike in the snow, which really amplified the colorful mountains. Here is that steep hill that I was talking about. Due to the steep grade, I don't think that I would consider this trail to be wheelchair or stroller friendly. Once you get to the bottom of the hill, the view opens up and you feel like you've been transported to another world. If you've never seen Chinle formations in person before, you would swear that they have to be man-made. The stripes on the mountains are so defined and perfect, and it's amazing to think that this is all the work of Mother Nature. Once you complete the loop, it's time to head back up that steep hill. But that's okay, because we needed to burn off some of those calories from all the snacks we've been eating on our road trip. The next stop after the Blue Mesa Trail is another quick stop, and it is the Agate Bridge. This is another cool stop for people who want to see cool things, but don't want to have to walk very far to see them. If you haven't seen any of our previous Petrified Forest National Park videos, I'm going to share some knowledge nuggets with you. These petrified trees that you're seeing in the park are over 200 million years old. As hard as these trees are, they are also very brittle, so in 1917 they built a concrete support under this tree to help keep it intact as the water eroded the ground that was underneath it. Luckily their efforts appear to have worked because it is still standing today. The next stop on our list is Jasper Forest. This section of the park is where you are going to start to see petrified wood in much higher concentrations. We were a little short on time on this visit and we unfortunately did not get to hike the entire two and a half miles of this trail. But we did get to go far enough in to look out over the sea of petrified wood and colorful mountains. If you've never been around petrified wood before, you're going to be amazed by not only how hard it is, but how heavy it is as well. Our miniature version of the Jasper Forest hike came to an end at this beautiful overlook. I would definitely love to do the entire hike on our next visit. One great thing about this park is that you never have to drive too far to get to the next stop. And the next spot on our list is the Crystal Forest. This is another hike that we were lucky enough to do in the snow on our last visit. This trail consists of small rolling hills and it is only three quarters of a mile long. The entire trail is paved and this one is definitely wheelchair and stroller friendly. This trail gives you a lot of bang for your buck. You get to see a lot of cool things considering that this trail is very short and you can pretty much see your car the entire time. 
One thing that we were pretty curious about were logs like these that appeared to be chopped up. It turns out that this is once again mother nature at work. The logs that were either partially or completely buried were subject to the forces of the earth as it rose and fell. As brittle as the petrified wood was, it could not withstand the pressure and it just snapped off like a glass rod. Even if you're not a huge geology buff, this stuff is really interesting. The end of our tour is quickly approaching, but we still have a couple spots left. Next up on the list is the Long Logs and Agate House hike. This is another one of our favorite hikes in the entire park. With an overall distance of 2.6 miles and just a tiny bit of elevation gain, this is just barely enough to consider a hike. If you are short on time and you can only do one or two hikes in the park, we think that this should be one of them. Not only do you get to see an absolute ton of petrified wood, but you also get to see the Agate House, which is really cool. If you've never heard of the Agate House, it is yet another part of the park with a great amount of historical significance. Even though the Agate House that you see today was a reconstruction that was built in 1934, the original Agate House that was also built on this site was occupied by the ancestral Puebloans somewhere between 1050 to 1300 AD. This trail is cut into two pieces. You can either see just the Agate House or just the Long Logs, but we recommend seeing both. And both trails were included in that distance of 2.6 miles. The Long Logs Trail is very appropriately named because there are some very long logs on it. In fact, this tree here measures a very impressive 141 feet. It's believed that when this tree was alive, it could have been over 200 feet tall. Not only do you have some of the longest logs in the park on this trail, but you also have the greatest concentration of petrified wood here. Please note that the Long Logs Trail does have some missing and broken concrete, so it is just a tiny bit more rugged than some of the other trails in the park. The last stop on our list is at the very southern edge of the park and it's the Rainbow Forest Museum and the Giant Logs Trail. If you have time, we would highly recommend stopping in the museum. The rangers are all super nice and they were more than happy to answer all of our petrified wood questions. They also have cool dinosaur exhibits and a gift shop. Just behind the museum is the Giant Logs Trail. This trail is home to a tree known as Old Faithful. It measures 10 feet across at its base. But besides that and the nice view that you can get from the viewpoint up at the top, I would put this very short hike on the list of hikes to do if you have some spare time. There are so many other trails in the park that are absolutely amazing and I would probably rather spend my time on those. One thing that this trail would be great for is families with small kids or people that don't want to walk too far to see a large assortment of petrified wood. And to cap off our visit, we found out that there was another geocache at the Giant Logs Trail. And that is going to do it for our driving guide to Petrified Forest National Park. If you decide to visit, be sure to practice leave no trace principles and leave the park looking even better than you found it. We'd like to send a huge thank you out to the National Park Service for the photo of Newspaper Rock. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because those are by far the best things that you can do to support this channel. Check us out on Instagram at thatadventurelife underscore official and for more cool things to do inside Petrified Forest National Park as well as other awesome adventures, head on over to thatadventurelife.com.